Hello and welcome to Orient Outreach. My name is Kim Urbanowski and I am joined today by Bob Smith and we're going to discuss the Orient Veterans Memorial Patriot Day ceremony that's coming up quickly. How are Her you? Good. I'm very good and thank you for having me in here today. Yeah, my pleasure. So um, this is, how many years have you been doing this at the, the memorial? I tried to think about it uh, just a few days ago and I, I think it's been about 12 years I've been doing this now. Okay. We started earlier, you know, right after the Orient Veterans Memorial, but uh, uh, we, I, they approached me and uh, I was, at the time, I was a uh, fire chief right. and uh, they approached me and asked me if I would be willing to do it and I said, sure, but uh, it's a hard one every year to do. It is a hard one. Yeah. It is a hard one. It's a beautiful one. We've been to many of them, um, myself, my family, the kids. Um, but that brings me to, you know, there are a number of different ceremonies that happen at the Veterans Memorial over the over the year. And I, I think that, am I wrong to say that you all have your own ceremony that you kind of own and that you do? I think this is the one that, that you sort of put on yourself. Yes, that's true. Um, there's nine of us on the on the board, and uh, there's several of us that do that chair the different events. I've taken this one on, and uh, it's very passionate to me because it's not just something to do. Um, you know, uh, it it's I was actively in the fire department when it happened. Um, I saw brothers and sisters, so to speak go down and uh, we had some people from the sheriff's department and other fire departments around here go over to Ground Zero yeah. uh, that I personally know so I take it very personal. I was going to ask you why this one was personal for you and, and for those of us that do know you and how involved you've been in in uh, you know public safety over the years with your service in the um, sheriff's department and of course your fire department and you're of course in the military as well so I, I would assume that that's why it's so important to you. But. It is, and uh, the numbers just keep going up and up every year of people who, first responders who have passed away um, since then. And as ironic, when I was looking this up the other day, uh, originally 343 firefighters died. And the other day, the latest uh, numbers I see now are 4,343 people have died first responders have died since that day. From complications? Complications, that they that cancer day? and stuff like that. Um, wow. So it's it's not just, it, it's very important to me that day, but it's an ongoing thing too. Sure is. Um, one thing I, you know, I, I, you see tragedies all the time and you see tragic events and first responders go in, they secure the area, they do what they have to do and they walk away and we're left to think about the victims. Right. And uh, first responders, uh, whether the military, whether you know local or whatever, they are the ones that have to go back to the stations, go back to their duties, and sometimes even get called out on another one. And uh, they have to forget about this one and move on to the next one. And that, that's very trying on people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so first responders have always been really special to me and I'll continue to, to uh, promote them. I think that's a really important um, point that some of us don't really think about all the time is the the ongoing effects and the things that happen even from even from things that happen just routinely during you know uh, saving children houses from fires that are even successful but you know those are those are um, traumatizing things that happen sometimes so I do believe that and you know that we should all be coming to the memorial to pay tribute to the people that were there on that day and that continue to be there to keep us all safe um, without you know thinking about themselves first I think that's an amazing well I, I don't want I don't want to take all away from uh, think about ourselves first what I'd like to point out is and what I point out every year is those people went to work that day whether the, the civilians or the first responders never thinking this was going to happen. This is something that we have to keep in mind. This wasn't a tragic war incident. This wasn't we're at war with somebody and the, one of the missiles or rockets hit. This was unprovoked and t uh, over 2,000 citizens of every nation that day lost their lives. And uh, 
you know. So what I try to promote is please come out and give us an hour of your time because I'm sure they would love to come and give us an hour of their time if they still had it, so. That's true. But That's so uh, true. the other thing I'd like to point out too, it's been 22 years, this will be the 22nd anniversary. And um, so anybody above the age of 20, below the age of 26, only read about it, hear about right. it. And we got to keep this alive because they could happen again. This is this is this wasn't uh, an act of war where you try to stay out of it and negotiate and everything like this. Nobody knew this was going to happen. Nobody knew this could predict this. So people have to understand, and that's why I like to see young people out there to hear. And uh, again, I think this year is going to be very good because I've got a very knowledgeable speaker coming in. She's a lieutenant colonel with the Air Force, retired. Uh, she was uh, she was uh, assigned to the White House Medical Unit, and she was a flight nurse. Wow! And she was on the plane that day that President that happened with President Bush. Oh my gosh! So this woman is amazing. She has such an amazing story, amazing career. But I think she's going to really be able to highlight that day because it's very hard to find people that were there that can sit there and talk about it. I've, I've got friends, I know people, um, both in the sheriff department, fire department, that uh, were at Ground Zero. And I've tried to get them to come out and uh, they just won't talk about it. So, you know, it's, uh, and she, and believe me, she's, she's very reluctant herself. This is, you know, but she wants, she wants to get the story out there at my urging. <laughs> at your urging, at your gentle, <laughs> gentle urging. Um, so in my opinion, I think that's, it, you've hit it spot on, right? So we've been taking our children for a long time and when they were younger, they didn't know the questions to ask until they got older. Uh, and then they started asking questions. So I think exposing them to that kind of a thing early on is, is not a bad thing. When I was a kid, I lived in Hawaii and I went to the Arizona Memorial. And you know, I didn't really understand what it was all about when I was a kid. I just, I knew that it was a memorial in Hawaii. But then, you know, when you grow up, you get a little more interested in it. Oh, I was there. I would like to hear more about it. And you have sort of a, uh, a foundation of knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. passing on history from other people's stories, I think is so invaluable. So I cannot wait to hear from her. Oh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a great show. Great. I, I hate to say great, you know, no. exciting and all that other stuff, because this is a very somber day. But, but uh, I think she'll be able to shed a lot of light on what happened that day from from seeing it firsthand. Right. So. So may I ask you, uh, what were you doing on that day? That particular day, I was at the uh, Kellogg Center at the Michigan State University. We had a every year we met in the fall for a fire inspectors conference, a four day conference, starting on Tuesday and going till Friday. And I can tell you exactly what I was doing. I was sitting in the chair, looking over the materials that we were going to discuss for the week. And some guys, some guy came into the hall and said, some dummy just ran into a, the, one of the Twin Towers. <laughs> and a lot of guys and myself, we just said, well, it must have been a bad weather day or something. You know, uh, I, I don't know if a lot of people know it or not, but B-17 hit the Empire State Building many years ago in the fog. And so a few people, you know, were concerned, but for the most part, you know, it's sad to hear. But then about 15, 20 minutes later, they come back in and says, oh, no, somebody hit another one, you know. And so yeah. that's when we just all ran up and got on the TVs and just sat there and watched it all afternoon. It was just, and again, with a bunch of firefighters and fire inspectors there and people that do this for a living, we, to see guys that are in tears, very somber. It was uh, not much was being said that day. Did it? Did it change? I know the answer is yes, but I guess what I'm asking for is like, how did it change the way that you did business as a first responder after that? Well, it's again, you know, we're trained for many, many things. We're not trained to do something like that, and to put on something like that would be very difficult. But we had more training after that. Um, one thing I was part of what we call the hazardous materials team, 
we didn't have any trucks at that point in time or anything. We were just a group of guys from different departments that got together. But after that, the first thing that uh, the executive of Brooks Patterson did was bought, put out a request, bought four trucks for us. We scattered them around the county, mm -hmm. and we began training very hard for stuff like that. Um, you know, it's it's. I don't care how hard you train. I mean, the, the the men and women of New York City probably see more than anybody from a little town of Orion Township would ever sure. see. Yeah, but but yet they weren't even prepared for it. So to try to, but we tried to, you know, get up as best we could. And and uh, the fact that we realized how naked we were at the time. Like I said, L. Brooks, he was. Uh, he was an advocate of the fire first responders and that. He says, well, he says, my hazmat team and somebody's over and he whispering in his ear, we don't have, you know, a bunch of guys get together, we don't have any equipment or anything because we've been asking for it up till then. And the checkbook was opened at that point. Right. We made good use of it and we have uh, uh, high angle attack teams now. We have um, uh, first responders that go to hazardous materials incidents, critical incidents and stuff like that. So. There's a lot of training, and it's not just one department, it, we're, because no one department can do it. Right. It's a group of departments that get together constantly and train, so that's the biggest thing. The other thing that came from it was um, the fact that th that day they could not communicate. The fire department, police department couldn't can communicate because the radios were in different, uh, they were just, they weren't able to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing that like Oakland County and other counties are, we've, we've got new uh, radio systems now where we can communicate with each other. In Oakland County here, they're going to a system right now that be able to talk to the UP if they wanted to, so. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, so that's just some of the things that we've, you know, done. And, you know, I'm talking like I, I know everything, but I've been gone for seven years from the fire department, so I'm just going by a lot of hearsay, that, but I know the guys, I know the people, the men and women, they, they take this very seriously, so. Yeah, and, and you know, we've recently gone to ALS and yeah. um, a lot of training there, and I've been fortunate, you know, enough to be in the position that I'm in, in now to kind of see a little bit more, and I'm kind of blown away at least once a week on some of the things that they do. and. You know the sheriff's department we get their reports and stuff they do wonderful work so we're we're very fortunate here um but i want to ask you a little bit more just about the memorial itself okay um so it's going to be set there at the memorial and if if anyone hasn't been there you highly recommend that you go it's a beautiful place um but we need to maintain and upkeep this thing right so was asking, wondering about donations. How do we keep things like this going throughout the year? Well, right now, uh, most of the donations just come in, you know, people donate to it and stuff like that. There's a there's a box there at the memorial if somebody wanted to put some money in. Uh, we have boxes around the, the different businesses in the township and stuff like that. But um, a lot of it comes from uh, anonymous donor, donors that like to donate and stuff like that. Uh, we have the the foundation, the, the ground has uh, got bricks in it that people buy for their loved ones or themselves and stuff like that. And they we etch out their whatever they want on it within reason. And, right. <laughs> and uh, you know, so stuff like that. But it's mostly uh, just a lot of uh, people who really care about the memorial. We've got one of the most beautiful memorials in the state, I, I can't say the country, but we do have one, and we got a we got one gentleman uh, that just puts every bit of heart and soul into that to keep it up beautiful. He, him and his few of his friends, they maintain that thing. I've seen him out there in snowstorms, blowing the snow off the bricks and yeah. stuff like that. So it's really, truly really a nice uh, venue. I would like to point out though that if weather does not like today. Mm. We would be meeting over at the community center okay. next door to us here, but uh, yeah. keep our fingers crossed. We've only had to uh, postpone it or move it one time, and that's so. Yeah, I think it was 2019, I think it was, or something, and then 2020, we did it at the Miracle Field. I remember that. That was yes. an interesting year, but it was still really beautiful. And the big flag will be out, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. assuming. That's probably my favorite part of it. <laughs> yeah, when we when we first purchased that aerial, um, 
Mike Flood, who's one of our trustees and his family, they made it known at that point that they were going to donate a flag for us. Yeah. And so we, we proudly show that over M24 for not only for this uh, uh, memorial, but for uh, Memorial Day and any other function that we have that has to do with uh, um, military or first responders. So. Right. But uh, very proud of that flag and uh, the fact that they were, he, the truck hadn't even arrived here yet. It was being, it was being built in uh, Iowa and it was going to be delivered and he came to me and said, I just want you to know that my family and I are going to make sure that that flag is there. And we get so many compliments from that flag being out oh, there. Oh yeah. So. It's glorious. It's really nice. And it's, and people expect to see it and, and you know, they drive by and they honk and it's, it's, it's a really nice patriotic symbol and it feels good to, you know, to see that. Um, so the ceremony is on the 11th of September, on the 11th of course. At 7 p.m. Um, like I said, weather, you know, permitting, if something happens, we'll do it here. Um, the one thing I did do when I, I was asked to chair this is uh, the memorial is primarily for military people. Yeah. And uh, we have the Memorial Day ceremony and you know, quite a few things for, for the military people. And being that this was more of a first responder thing, I took it upon myself and hoped that they didn't fire me after it. <laughs> but every, Of course not. Everybody in this program is uh, first responders. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very proud of that, that uh, we, uh, you know, that we have all first responders. Now we will have one y young lady in the Honor Guard this year, she'll be wearing her Army uniform, but she is a first responder. She works uh, as a paramedic in that, but uh, she's proud of her uniform too. Yeah. So, and then I'm sure the Lieutenant Colonel will probably be wearing hers, but um, it's no snub against the military. Again, I spent many years in the military too, but it's just a matter of um, uh, this is pay homage to the first responders. So yeah, well, I look forward to it, um, and I hope that we will have a big turnout this year. Um, yeah, I just I, I just want to tell everybody, please, if you've got young ones, bring them to the memorial for that one hour because uh, this is something that we cannot let anybody forget. Never forget. All right. Never forget. Never forget. Well, I'll see you there. Okay. And I hope to see many of you, we all hope to see many of you out there on September 11th. If you want more information, you can go to the website, mm -hmm. Orion Veteran, uh, orionveteransmemorial.org or .com. We'll put it up on the screen, the, the <laughs> correct one. <laughs> we'll put it up on the screen, the correct one, um, or you can, you know, join the Facebook page and get um, event notifications that way. But um, we'll see you all out there, and thank you very much for being here today for Orion Outreach and telling us all about the Patriot Day ceremony. Um, and uh, thank you all for joining us and tuning in, and we'll see you soon.